All right, Ken Flo, before we get out of here, I've been mentioning you on Instagram looking fine. Uh, <laughs> Freddie Roach. <laughs> yes. Boxing Hall of Famer. He ended up in his gym. That was pretty cool to see how that all come together. Dude, it was awesome. So uh, Jorge Blanco, who, who trains George St. Pierre, uh, he's actually worked with Michael Bisping, uh, uh, oddly enough, uh, as well. But uh, a phenomenal striking coach, um, excellent martial artist. Uh, he w was over there, and I've been trying to hook up and meet up with him. And he was actually hitting pads with Freddie Roach. They worked very closely uh, together. And, um, you know, he was doing his own uh, boxing training and uh, apparently discussing uh, different strategies and training strategies for George St. Pierre. Um, and he, he invited me to come down and, and, and watch. And that was the first time that I, I've been to Wildcard before, but I've never uh, had the opportunity of seeing uh, Freddie Roach work. Um, and, and it was just a, a real pleasure. You know, I said, uh, a pleasure to watch a master at work, and he really is, man. He's so specific with everything. He, he, he wants perfection in everything that he does. Um, always just so defensively aware and offensively aware, just very precise. And um, I, I learned a lot. You know, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. So having the opportunity of seeing guys like Freddie Roach work and Jorge Blanco uh, was just was just awesome for me, um, you know, just trying to learn. But uh, yeah. and then getting getting the opportunity of, of talking to Freddie, man, it was awesome. He knows Peter Welch, my boxing coach, and oh, a lot of the yeah. other guys that I that I've worked with. So we shared some uh, <laughs> a lot of funny stories and a lot of stories from the Boston area and uh, how we knew a lot of the same people. And man, I tell you what, Freddie has never looked better. You know, obviously, uh, you know he, he he stays active. I know he's been working out uh, on his own as well, but. He looks phenomenal. Like he looks better than he did five years ago. Still very sharp, uh, working his ass off, um, and uh, that that was really cool to see, man. Um, always having beautiful women around him, so maybe that's what's keeping him young. But whatever <laughs> it is, I tell you what, Freddie Roach is a funny prick, man. He, he's entertaining, man. Oh yeah, I had him on our mouthpiece boxing radio show several times back in the day. I think the last time I had him on was 2009, and you're right here, seven eight years later. He does look better, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's very encouraging, obviously, for Freddie Roach. And, dude, we got to get the no-nonsense Peter Welch on this podcast, huh? We should. Oh, that absolutely. Might, that might be the last guy on earth that I would fuck with, by the way. <laughs> Me too. Me I'm telling you, right? <laughs> too. He might his just be fist, the— His fist is as big as my laptop. I mean, it's insane. I, I, I would not want to get hit by that man. It would that, just take one, that's for sure. And, and beyond just the power in his hands, the boxing, right? Yeah. Last uh, guy. Last, last guy in the world guy. you'd mess with, I'm telling you. We'll have we'll have <laughs> no. him on the podcast, and and then you'll you'll be like, oh yeah, you're right. You probably shouldn't fuck with Peter Welsh. <laughs> so, I joked off the top of the show. You know, I said something like, are we are we gonna lead with Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather? I didn't want to lead the show with it, um, but we do have a few minutes here, so I just want to talk to you just about a few things relating to a potential mega fight between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. One item I want to talk about is the weight. Okay. Assuming this fight does come together, Floyd Mayweather is going to hold a lot of the cards, presumably, in terms of what weight this fight is conducted at, you know, how many ounces are in the gloves and all that stuff. So let's start with the weight. Prevailing wisdom is that this thing would maybe be at 147 pounds, which is boxing wel boxing's welterweight limit, or maybe it would be at, at 150 or 151. Certainly don't think it's going to be as high as 154. Uh, yeah. If I'm Mayweather, I'm not letting Connor, even though the glove situation is what it is, and I'll get to that in a minute. I'm not letting Connor come in at 154 pounds. I mean, if you're Floyd Mayweather, don't you want Connor cutting to 147? There's no doubt about it. And, and you know, I, I've met Mayweather. I've met, obviously, Connor McGregor several times. Mayweather is not a big dude, man. I, right. I've shaken his hand. He has tiny hands. He's got a smaller head. So his whole bone structure is small. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, as, as one of the greatest boxers of all time, you don't want to give any advantages to any of your fighters, you know, any any of your opponents. And uh, for Conor McGregor, a guy who can really crack and who's going to be far bigger uh, than Mayweather, yeah, I want to get him as weak as possible. And that means try to get him to cut as much weight as possible. Now, when there's $50 million on the line, I, I think he'll have a lot more leverage in trying to get Conor to make 147. Um, and, I, and I imagine that's what he's going to try to do. So, what you're talking about right now is one of the big hurdles in the negotiations between Connor and Mayweather. Front row Brian on Twitter mentioned to me a good point about the gloves. So above 147 pounds, Nevada mandates 10-ounce gloves. Yeah. 47 and below 
it could be eight outs. So Mayweather certainly would want the heavier gloves. So that certainly bears watching. Also, Mayweather's weight against his last seven opponents. This from Jedi Goodman on Twitter. Berto 146, Pacquiao 146. 146 and a hook and 146 for the two Maidana fights. Canelo, he was 150 and a hook. 146 for Guerrero, 151 against Miguel Cotto. So I don't envision this being above 151 pounds. Connor looks like he has leaned out pretty substantially. So who knows? You know, maybe they settle on 150 or 151, but that certainly bears watching. In terms of Conor McGregor's chances in the fight, I, this is going to be hard, I think, because you're going to get asked this question so many times over the next yeah. several months. And, you know, I have been pretty consistent in my stance that I do believe McGregor has more than a puncher's chance. I've also said maybe he can make the fight dirty a little bit, inadvertent headbutt, maybe a groin strike here or there. No denying the pop from Conor McGregor, right? But Floyd Mayweather's chin is held up against elite boxers throughout his entire career. Obviously, he doesn't get hit all that much. From a betting perspective or just from a competition standpoint, you know, is this fight closer than people are giving it credit for? Or is this just going to be a Mayweather whitewash, you know, 12 dominant rounds? You know, this is Mayweather's fight to lose. Um, you know, everyone has the exact same game plan, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, people breaking down the fights of how to beat Mayweather. You got to be the bigger man. You got to bully him. You got to clinch with him. You got to play dirty a little bit. You got to beat up the body. Um, you know, you, you, you got to bully him around the, the around the ring. Everyone has tried that. He's 49 and oh, he knows that uh, the, the guy is a master boxer. He's been doing it forever, uh, you know, probably over 100 amateur fights uh, to his credit. So it, he really has simplified his style um, down to it being pretty perfect, man. He does not really take many clean shots at right. all. Um, so, you know, he has been dropped before, uh, but that was a long time ago. Uh, he doesn't really have that style. His style has certainly changed. He used to be a little bit more exciting. Now he understands that he needs to be way more defensively sound. And I, I think he's going to take that same route here against Conor McGregor. And I think that, you know, I, I think that uh, Mayweather can lose this fight, but I don't think Conor can win this fight, if that makes any sense. I think yeah. if Mayweather makes a big time mistake or he gets cocky through any point in this fight, Conor can still knock him out. Conor can absolutely crack. And the, here's the thing with Conor. The way that he knocks guys out, I, I, yes, I do think he has power. But the way that Conor is knocking guys out in MMA is based on his precision. Right. It's based on his timing. And it's based on his angles. He's getting guys to lunge at him so he can knock them out. And that's what he's doing one after one uh, here in MMA. It's not going to be that. It's not going to be that against Mayweather. Mayweather isn't going to rush in, or I don't think he's going to rush right. in. He's never done that, and I don't think he's going to open himself to get countered like a lot of the MMA fighters are doing against Conor McGregor. Um, so that, to me, is, is the big issue. Um, Conor is a phenomenal boxer when it comes to mixed martial arts, but when it's boxer on boxer against someone at the at the level uh, of a Mayweather, I just don't see it happening like that. And I don't think McGregor sees this as a fight in which he has nothing to lose, right? He has every intention of going in there and winning that fight. But with two yes. counter fighters, you know, it could be a little bit of a staring contest. I just don't think it's in McGregor's nature to allow this to be a boring staring contest. I think if right. he has to be the one to force the issue, Connor's going to go in there and do that. I agree. He has that calculated pressure. He just stays in your face, but he's the guy who likes to kind of back you up, wants you kind of to, to lunge at him, and then he takes you out. So, uh, I, you know, the way that Connor fights, I've never seen him in a boring fight. That That is not in his DNA. He is the ultimate entertainer, you know, outside of the ring and in the ring, outside the cage and in the cage. And I don't see this fight being any different. All right, good stuff. I'm sure we'll have more on that in the weeks to come. That's going to do it for this week. Thank you to Ray Longo. Thanks to Cheeto Vera for coming on. He he recently got back to Southern California, so we appreciate Cheeto coming on. And hopefully this brings more attention to his story, which is just an unbelievable one. And, and this isn't, you know, necessarily to try to raise more money for the surgery necessarily, but I think the more we get the word out there about his family situation, the better, and, and just really an inspirational story, uh, and a lot of different layers to it. There's the Ecuador angle that has nothing to do with, you know, the syndrome that his daughter suffers from, so happy to see Chito Vera get it done over the weekend. Thanks to him for joining us. Thanks to all of you for listening. Our producer, of course, is TJ DeSantis. TJ, best of luck on the Invicta FC call this weekend. You can see it all at UFCFightPass.com. All right, with that, for Ken Flo, I'm John Anik. Thank you all for listening. We will talk to you in a week or so. Until then, yo, later. 
The preceding podcast was a TJ DeSantis production. Comments, questions, and inquiries can be directed to desantisprod at gmail.com.